and I have been uh, asked to talk on uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis in public health. Now, uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis are becoming almost like a must-have skill for all researchers. Uh, about a decade ago, one might have just managed mastering the art of writing narrative reviews. Now, uh, but with the passage of time uh, and with abundance of evidence and evidence taking different positions like being uh, controversial at times, we need to develop skills which uh, help us in synthesizing the evidence in a transparent and objective and replicable manner. And that's exactly where uh, the science of systematic reviews and meta-analysis uh, comes into existence. Uh, we, we must understand why we need uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis. As I said, the overabundance of uh, evidence requires us to do comprehensive uh, synthesis so that we uh, provide meaningful, useful, relevant inputs for uh, action. Now, usually systematic reviews and meta-analysis have uh, focused on synthesizing evidence from uh, RCTs, and that's more majorly in clinical practice, the way we see the Cochrane reviews. But in public health, uh, things are a bit complex. For example, we do not always manage to have a very precise research question. Now, that's the premise of systematic reviews. If you don't have a precise research question, Completing a, a systematic review could be very challenging. It could become more resource intensive. Now in uh, public health, usually what happens is our interventions are not uh, in isolation. We usually go for a package of interventions. Similarly, our outcomes are also very variegated. Now we have studies, for example, we have uh, some studies and each study has tried a different set or combination of interventions and has also assessed a different combination of outputs. How do we synthesize them uh, in the form of a systematic review or even more desirable meta-analysis? This requires us to group uh, similar uh, exposures or even uh, similar outcomes. And uh, But but how, how similar could uh, uh, things be? You can always justify how heterogeneous things could be, but when you're trying to justify uh, how similar they are, it's, uh, it can be always questioned as comparing apples and oranges, not comparing maybe clubbing apples and oranges. Now, uh, the other element in public health related systematic reviews and meta-analysis is that the understanding of the context and uh, at times even the study design. Uh, in uh, clinical research, as I said, usually systematic reviews would focus on just one, uh, one type of study design, say RCTs. Uh, Systematic reviews and meta-analysis could go for just like focusing on RCTs. But in public health, we uh, have to encounter, come, we usually come across a range of study designs and we try to uh, synthesize evidence from all of them in one go. That means we may have randomized trials, uh, field trials, we may have non-randomized trials and other qualitative studies as well. Some of them may be uh, taken up for a systematic review. But if the synthesis is not very uh, uh, statistical, we may go for a narrative synthesis, but then that has to have a structure to it. Now, wh wh what is interesting of systematic reviews is that they um, uh, sort of overcome the limitation of individual studies. Uh, individual studies are uh, more context specific or uh, limited to a particular population subgroup. But when you do a systematic review, it allows you to club all of them together. So it gives you more power for whatever inference you do. But at the same time, public health related systematic reviews and meta-analysis uh, have this element of time sensitivity. So we, we must devise a research question which is neither too precise or too broad, is interesting for the policy makers or the program managers. And at the same time, must, uh, we must be able to complete them uh, within a limited time span so that whatever evidence we cull out of the review is still usable and uh, of interest to uh, uh, the program managers and policy makers. So uh, this uh, systematic review and meta-analysis uh, story is a bit resource intensive, is a rigorous process, but at the same time, public health people must come out with evidence that is usable. It should not be just uh, uh, for uh, scientific rigor and methodology. Now, 
uh, th there are certain elements that uh, we as uh, students of systematic reviews and meta-analysis must understand and that's exactly where the skill acquisition element goes in. So how do we assess heterogeneity, uh, forest plots, I squares or chi squares, or even how do we do a, a, a pooled effect a modeling? How, how do we do a fixed effect and a random subject modeling? How do we assess quality of the studies we have included? How do we assess uh, publication bias uh, 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 in terms of uh, uh, funnel plots or uh, doing your uh, 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 big Mazumdar uh, tests or even Eggers tests. Uh, and of course, uh, sensitivity analysis, because there will be studies which will be very outlined. And if you include them in your assessment, what, what is the effect? And if you don't include or exclude, what happens? So these are uh, certain elements that uh, uh, needs to be taken into consideration while deciding whether we want to do a systematic review or meta-analysis. Uh, the other uh, thing is that in public health, uh, not everything is uh, uh, peer-reviewed and published. So we find a lot of gray literature, uh, reports, white papers. And when we are doing a systematic review, the search must also incorporate these uh, elements, which in clinical research, may, uh, we most encounter peer-reviewed uh, publications, but in public health-related systematic review and meta-analysis, we must have a search strategy that is comprehensive and takes care of the gray literature. Similarly, uh, the diversity of data also calls in for more uh, watchful approach to meta-analysis. Now, uh, but, but there are certain advantages of doing a systematic review and meta-analysis as uh, uh, young researchers. It deepens our understanding of the research area and uh, uh, it, it also gives us a very good idea of what methods previous researchers have uh, used. And if you uh, come up with a uh, systematic review meta-analysis, usually these are very highly cited. And if you're going for a grant writing and, or, or you're writing manuscript for, for example, a very reputed journal like Lancet, if you have put in what evidence exists or what evidence suggests, uh, and you write that paragraph out of a systematic review kind of approach, then that is very impressive. Now, uh, these are uh, uh, certain uh, elements of mastering the skill of uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis, but it is uh, in itself a very rigorous process. If you uh, relate to the uh, pyramid of evidence, systematic reviews and meta-analysis are on the top of the pyramid. So these are very high quality uh, research products. Uh, now science is evolving and uh, it is also coming up as a good practice to involve a librarian when we are designing the search strategy. Uh, as we delve deeper in the research methodology workshops that would follow, we shall uh, clearly understand uh, what these nuances are. Happy learning. Thank you so much.